Well, FM24 is finally here, and you all know what that means. We are back with our staple series on the channel for another year. The headline features for FM24 promise better AI recruitment and transfer market management. Well, we're going to need that in abundance this year. In this save, we have no say in transfers, staffing, or contracts, and we work under a director of football at every single club. They will decide both the tools we work with and quite possibly our fate. So strap yourselves in for another year because this is the head coach. Yes, hello and welcome along to part one of the FM24 head coach story with me, Daniel. We are back today to begin a new journey as we combine a director of football challenge with a journeyman and we try and work our way from the very bottom as a Sunday league reputation manager with no coaching badges or experience and work our way all the way up to the top of world football. But we're going to do it the hard way. We've got no say in transfer staffing or contracts. We've got to work with what our director of football says at each club. And as well as all of that, there is one additional twist this year. Usually we start in the UK. I argue that it's more realistic if we end up with our first job accepting an English one over one in, say, Finland or India or Japan. But on this occasion, it's a little bit different, isn't it? Because in recent years, we've seen more and more young English managers go abroad to start their career, having not been given the opportunity in the UK. And we're going to try and take that approach in FM24. If you're looking forward to it all, please do put a thumbs up on the video. We will be carrying on with this story every day throughout the beta at 3.30pm here. And in addition to this, our second long-term story will start in the morning. We'll be live with Southend United at 11.30am. Thank you very much for coming along as always, but let's go and get straight into it. We have got to find our first job in world football and having a look at the available jobs about now, I think Japan looks our most likely outcome because there's a few jobs in England, but not at the very bottom. And there's a few clubs in the third tier of Japanese football. But otherwise, there's not really a great deal about at the bottom end. So I'm not sure what job we're going to get here. Just as a bit of proof, because I know sometimes people accuse me, there is no reputation, there are no coaching badges. You can see it at the top right there. The attributes are appalling. We've got no knowledge of world football other than England. And of course, my favourite club on here is Luton Town as well. But what we're going to do is skip ahead now. We've got around 50 leagues loaded from about 35 countries. We've covered most of the world where we can. So let's go on holiday. Let's go and look for a job. And we will return when we get interviews. Fingers crossed, it won't be long. We return six days in with our first job interview offer and as I slightly suspected it is from Japanese football and officially at the moment by the league standings with the Japanese league being mid-season we are being interviewed by the worst team in Japanese football because FC Gifu are 20th in the J3 league. They are two points from safety or two points from the playoff and three points from safety and they are the side the only one so far to offer us an opportunity. What sort of reputation is the club out of curiosity? They are one and a half stars. So actually probably a little more reputable than some of the clubs at the bottom of English football. 2,000 season ticket holders, a 26,000 stadium. It's not all bad, is it? We're going to attend the interview. We're being rejected by every other job. We just set them all to auto apply. But let's go in for our first interview of FM24 and see if there's any difference in the questioning and whether or not we're going to be given a job. So here we go. It's great to be started. What a lovely uh, kit that is. Just a few sponsors on it, eh? Good communication in the middle. That's what we're going to be going for. Can you explain why you appear to be in the running for a few jobs? Well, I need a job. That's quite simple, isn't it? I'm doing whatever I can to keep progressing. What makes you the right manager for a relegation battling team? I'm a strong motivator and leader. There's nothing like talking yourself up, is there? Right, I don't need to bring anyone in, so I don't need a bigger backroom team. That's absolutely fine. You can do that. How comfortable are you working with Hiroki Izumi, our current director of football? Now, that's a bonus at this level, a club that's already got one. Do you know what? He's not bad. He's a 60-year-old. His judgment of ability and potential is far better than I expected it to be. 
And he's got a bit of experience too. Yeah, I'm more than happy with that. What sort of budget do you need to put together your backroom team? I don't need a budget. I'm not going to make a change. And what are your thoughts on a long-term vision? Finishing the top three places this season. Right, hang on. This might be a club based on what I've seen so far. I do watch Japanese football a bit, but only the top tier, I'll be honest with you. So I don't really know. Maybe we've got a fallen giant here because this club seems to be very good. They're expecting the top three. They've had an awful start to the year. Maybe we can turn them around. I guess the pressure with that is that next season, we are going to be expected to meet that objective, aren't we? Of gaining automatic promotion, which is going to be one hell of a challenge and could lead to a first job sacking. I'm going to say it's acceptable because it's the only way I'm going to get a job. This year, though, because of the start they've had, they have amended their expectations. We're aiming to avoid relegation. Is that something you can do? Absolutely. Hello. A first job. Now, this has never happened in a head coach before. A first job with a transfer budget of 900,000. Now, either Japanese football is incredibly rich across the board, or I might be getting very lucky in this job. I'm going to say I can work with a slightly smaller one because I want to try and give myself the upper hand if there's a battle for this job. Proposed wage budget of 35 grand. I mean, a sort of League 2, low League 1 level. I've seen a lot worse, let's be honest with it. I'm going to say I'm happy with that. Do we have any requests? No, I am delighted. An enlightening discussion indeed. And fingers crossed, based on the initial impression there and some of the data and stats, looks like a job I'd quite like to have. This could be an interesting start. And if we get it, we're going to start taking the Ange Postacoglu route. Free Japanese football, maybe the Arsene Wenger route to the top of European and world football. Let's see if we get that job and any more interviews. We'll be back in a minute with any updates. Well, no news on the interview we attended yesterday, but we have now got another one from Japanese football. And this will actually be quite good because we'll know whether it's just a very wealthy league, whether there's a lot of good clubs about or whether we might have just struck lucky with the club for that first interview. So let's go and have a look at this one from Sanuki, who are 12th in J-League 3. Let's go and have a look at their general. Only a one-star reputation. Okay, so this club is potentially smaller. Maybe it was just a fallen giant in the other one then. Let's go through the interviews. The board very pleased to have taken the time to attend today. There are a few questions we'd like to ask. Let's get down to business. I just want to keep progressing. We're currently defying expectations and have done so for much of the season. Right, okay, so this is a club that maybe expects to be doing worse. Maybe their manager's moved on for somewhere else, I'm not sure. I can't say I've consistently helped players because I've got no experience. But there's not really an alternative there, is there? I've consistently helped players perform above and beyond their abilities. I've got to stick with that. They've got a director of football as well. Ryohi Kobayashi, I apologise for pronunciations. Okay, he's not quite as good, but I'm happy to work with him, that's fine. I don't need any changes for the budget. And what else do they expect? Avoid relegation, work towards a top half finish. Right, so the last club was definitely bigger, but they have huge expectations which could risk the sack. We're comfortable with avoiding relegation. I mean, even that transfer budget's not awful. It's a lot less, but it's still a decent one. I'm going to say again, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with the wage budget, but it is less than half of the other club. So realistically, from what we've seen so far, I desperately want a job from that first interview, don't I? They're happy with that. We've probably got a better chance of getting that job. But let's hope that the other club come in because by the looks of it, they're far bigger on paper. Well, just two days later, we have a job offer, and it's the one we wanted. FC Gifu have come in for us, and this looks like we've really landed on our feet for our first job. I've got to be honest with you. So their current season, their plans in pre-season were to finish in the top three. They've changed their mind on that now and just said avoid relegation. That was in the interview anyway. But next season, we are going to have to gain automatic promotion. So with the club bottom by a couple of points, our job is to keep them up the rest of this year and then get flying next season. We've got a decent director of football who we must keep in place. We've got to keep the backroom staff size as it is. But we've got a decent wage, nearly 900 quid a week, and a transfer budget and wage budget that is very good for a first job. We're going to start the negotiations. We'll try and edge up to 900 quid. Even got an 18-month deal as well. We've got to be pretty happy with this, I think. Let's see if they'll accept it. 
900 quid a week. We are off to the far east of Asia. We are going to Japan for our first job. We're going to go and meet our third tier club now, get through the introductions and see the important bit. The staff and the players we're going to be working with. Off to FC Gifu. I'm quite excited about this one. Well, here we are. FC Gifu hire us as manager. We have got 18 months to prove that we can keep the club up and then take them up next season. That is the expectation and all that will be accepted. They've got great sponsorships. They've got everything we need in place. And by the looks of it, they're a pretty big club, bigger than the site we'd normally start with. And even if we plan to start in England this say, this is the first job we've been offered. We know about Hiroki Azumi, who is a good director of football. But what about the assistant manager, Naoki Sakata? He's okay, not quite so good by comparison. They're already out of the All Japan Cup. They're bottom of the league. They finished 14th last season, so they've not really been in relegation trouble. Hang on a minute. I've just seen all the stuff on the right here. This is our first job as a manager with no experience. We're used to really poor ones, part-time clubs, terrible teams in England, Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales, wherever it'll be. But the last two years we've been stuck in Wales, haven't we? Here, a relatively new 26,000 seater, adequate and average facilities across the board, secure finances, a 20-year-old club. I mean, this is all looking pretty good, isn't it? Might find out in the comments that they're one of the most hated clubs in world football or something now. But overall, looking all right. Let's have a look at the story here. They haven't won a competition since 2006, which is when they won the fifth tier. Right, so I'm guessing they were founded at lower levels and have worked their way up. Maybe are one of those unpopular clubs with lots of money behind them. We've got loads of players to meet, but of course, this means nothing to us now. We have no idea who any of them are. Apologies if any of you end up watching this. And for now, we have just got to avoid relegation. But next year, if we do that, we have now got to win the league. That is big pressure. Let's go and get through to our first day at the job. We are going to meet the staff and players because this is going to be one hell of a challenge. And for the first time, we come into a first job with proper big expectations. So a quick reminder, we are bottom of the league. We've got a youth intake preview we'll look at as well. Bottom of the league with 13 points, just three from safety, which shouldn't be an issue. Only won two games of 17 this year, but looking at the team above, the goal difference is better. And hopefully we can start to show that we're going to be a top team next season. We've got to avoid relegation. We know that's the job in hand and we'll deal with the tactical direction in a minute. But for our first day in the job, let's meet the staff and let's meet the players because that's what you all want to see. So let's go through to the staffing. We have got quite a big coaching team, actually. So we've met the assistant manager briefly, who wasn't very good. He's got an 18-month deal. We've got a head of youth development, who's also an under-18 coach. And by the way, he is excellent for this level. 13 for judging potential, 14 working with youngsters, and not a bad coach as part of the bargain, too. The goalkeeping coach is Tajima. He is not very good. The fitness coach, Sakai, is pretty decent which is going to be important at this level uh, senior coaches sevens across the board isn't too bad but great working with youngsters again sevens across the board there similar for all of them to be honest with you Kubota's a good technical coach but not a great deal else going on there second team manager is Shun Shinohara he is not particularly good at all we've got a few players who are also second team assistant managers helping out with youth coaching and whatever but overall, not a particularly great coaching team. And perhaps more worryingly, no scouts, no physios, nothing on that side. Loads of sports scientists for whatever causes that, but nothing really on the physio and scouting side. So that's going to be something we have to work on a little bit. Let's go and get through to the playing staff, though. We'll start with the development center just to make sure there's no superstars hidden in here. And maybe there are, to be honest, because we've got a two and a half star veteran striker in our second team. Who, OK, I mean, that's a striker I'd be happy with in the National League South. Let's put it that way. If we're comparing to previous years in the Welsh League, he'd be a superstar. So the fact that he can't get in a squad is not bad. He is transfer listed and the director of football is in charge of that. So he might not be involved for too much longer. But let's go through to the senior team and have a quick look of the club info and facilities because oh in fact they had been in the second league so they went straight up from the fifth or sixth tier all the way to the second tier floated in the bottom half for years 
came down the year before COVID and have been stuck in the third tier ever since. So our job is actually going to be to build them back up. Okay, so this club is bigger than I thought. It's an absolutely huge opportunity for our first job. There's no doubt in that. But let's go through to the squad screen. We'll get them in assistant report order. I just want to have a quick look to see if the transfer windows are open and all of that sort of stuff. The match squad must have no more than four foreign players and must have two players who are trained at the club. Okay, so we'll keep an eye to see how many foreign players we've got at the minute. And we've also got to look at the transfer window. Open from 17th of July till 16th of August. Ah, so it opens next week. That's pretty handy, isn't it? Let's go back to the squad then and see what we've got to work with because this has got me very excited until I've just seen the goalkeepers. Both of them, one and a half star ability. Are we going to have like four brilliant players and then 10 awful ones? Is that going to be the way? Ono Chol Wan is the first goalkeeper. Not great if we're being honest. He's only six for aerial reach and whatever else. How tall is he? Oh, we're in the wrong measurements. Back in a minute. Right, we've got the measurements back in a way I can understand them. He's six foot one. He's just not very good. Uh, Hayashi is the other keeper. He's not quite so bad, but for a goalkeeper to be lacking in agility and balance that much is a worry. Composure and positioning are both also weaknesses, which I hate. Let's have a look at the defence instead. We've got a right back who's two star ability. Sabasa Kusumoto. He, hang on. He's got the attributes of a brilliant striker. What's going on? He can't tackle and he's good up front. Please say he's a striker as well. Oh my word. I mean, I've got to retrain him as a striker, surely. I would argue he's EFL level at the very least if you put him up front. And if there's one position on a pitch you wouldn't put him, based on his crossing and tackling being his two worst attributes, you certainly wouldn't put him at fullback, would you? How bizarre. We'll retrain him. Genichi Endo, two and a half star ability centre half. Not the most determined, but physically solid. He's got all the attributes. He's all right. I'm happy with him. Takumi Fujitani is a two star centre half. Heading ability of four. Tackling of eight. Again, his two weaknesses are the things we need, but he's not bad as a right back, which he can play naturally. So that might end up being his position for us. We've got Kode Higino, two star centre half again. Not very good. Jumping reach of three. Blimey. This is not going as well as I'd hoped from all of the intros. Yuki Wada is two and a half start with big potential. Again, the jumping reach is a problem, but he's a bit better. He's naturally left sided. I don't think that's too disastrous, to be honest. I would consider playing him. Stevia McKinney is a left back who is only rated two star, but actually... If you take out his crossing going forward as a defensive fullback, and maybe even as a left centre half, I don't think he's too bad. The problem is, he's a fringe player and he's wanted, so will our director of football sell him? I don't know. The next player working down, oh, we're already into midfielders. Either a few of these can play in defence, or this team is very unbalanced and attack heavy. So left midfielders, 35-year-old Tomoya Ugajin. He's going to leave at the end of his contract, which is January. He can play left back naturally, and you know what? As an attacking fullback, he's not bad at all. He's got a long throw. He's fairly quick. He's got one cap for Japan. He's not bad at all. That might solve part of our problem. Next player is a holding midfielder, another 35 year old. This one, Ichikawa. Great determination. Good defensively. Good on the ball. Yeah, he's all right in that holding role. We've now got to think, though, tactic with a holding midfielder, because I think that's the only way it's going to work out. Very strange 12-year gap in his career there. Maybe played at the lower levels, I don't know. Rio Kabota is two and a half star. He's also injured for four weeks. Big potential, traditional winger. Not the best off the ball, but everything else is pretty rock solid, to be honest. Very good and very happy with him starting. Not sure how much I can trust the coach summaries here because I'd argue some of the weakest rated players have been the best. So I might end up trawling through the development centre again. Takuya Sumi is one of the superstars of the club. Four star ability holding midfielder. He is excellent on the ball, good in a tackle. And actually very similar to the other guy we looked at a minute ago. So those two could form a good base to a midfield. I'm not sure what tactic we'll play with two holding midfielders because as many of you will know if you're regulars, 
It's not the type I normally play, but I'm very happy with that. Next one is Rio Makita, who is a four-star right winger. Can also play holding midfield. See, how is he better than the other one? The two and a half star winger we just looked at is not worse than him. We're going to have to ignore the coach summaries here, but he's a good player. He's another one that's worth having. We've got another two and a half star experienced midfielder, Yasuki Kashiwagi. He is pretty good again. Another one I'm fairly happy with. Bit more aggressive, bit more attacking. Got a few more attributes that might suit that game. Can play centre mid or attacking mid, which does give us some options too. Can also play off the left and has got 11 caps for Japan. That's what we like to see, bit of experience. Kasuni Kubota is a two and a half star player who, again, is picked as a right winger, which doesn't look too natural for him, but not a bad player at all. There's a lot of players that are going to make it hard to make a tactic here, aren't there? And it certainly isn't a balanced squad. Next one, another two and a half star right winger. Can play off the left, isn't great. Don't think I want to be reliant on him. He's transfer listed anyway. Tatsuya Yashuda is another 34 year old. Three and a half star ability. Another right winger. Why is this squad so imbalanced? I mean, he's not very good in my opinion. He can put a cross in. He's got good technique. But again, why he warrants being better than Kubota, I don't know. It really doesn't make sense to me. We've got a two-star homegrown player at the club who, one for the future, but doesn't really look like one for now. I'm guessing based on there only being two homegrown players at the club at the moment that he's probably there to meet a quota. Uh, we've got another four-star star in Tomohiro Seko. He is a 35-year-old left winger who is not bad, actually. Cuts in from the left. He's a good finisher, good technique. Finally brings a bit of balance from the other side, which is great. Daishi Komoda is two and a half star as well. Basically a less good version of what we just met. We've got Toma Murata, who is a two and a half star 22 year old, who is not quite as good at any of it. We've got our final four star ability player in Kensai Karata. He is a 34 year old attacking midfielder. Yeah, I could see him making runs beyond the strikers and getting a few goals. I'm happy with him. Now we get on to strikers and there are seven here at the club. We start with Kenzai Akita, three star ability, six foot one, very composed. Not the best finisher, but probably a pretty good target man if we're being honest. The problem we've got is we've basically got to play a 4 2 3 1 because of the midfielders available. There's no real alternative. So if we've got two good strikers, I don't see how I get them in the team. He can play off the right, but it doesn't suit him at all. Next is a 35 year old, Junya Tanaka. How is he only two and a half star ability? He looks great. Again, a target forward, 12 jumping reach, but not quite as tall. Very good mentally, pretty good technically. He played for Vissel Kobe prior and was scoring goals there. I mean, he's probably only a substitute now, given his stamina and natural fitness, but a good player, a former Japanese international. Definitely good to have him here. Next three star ability striker is Fujioka. He is a more natural striker running in behind. He's actually pretty good off the left as well. Not in terms of crossing ability, but as that inside forward. He's another option. But again, so many players that can play the same position and then next to no defenders. It makes no sense at all, this team, and the way it's been built. We've got a couple of old boys now. 34-year-old Takai is two and a half star. Not as good as what we've met so far. There's no doubt in that. Uh, Two-star ability, Okamura. Again, not as good as what we've met so far. Uh, Hasono is a three-star ability, 35-year-old striker. Not got the legs anymore yet again, but definitely very good on determination. Good finisher. Technically, he's brilliant. But again, can't do 90 minutes, I wouldn't have thought. And then finally, 24-year-old, a bit of youth up front at last, is Charles Nduka, who has two-and-a-half-star ability, three-and-a-half potential, six-foot, again, a bit of a target forward. But I really don't know who put this squad together and thought it was a good idea. Hopefully not our current director of football or we're going to have some trouble. But if I'm being honest with you, you can let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree. I'm a little bit more worried now than I was when I was taking this job because I thought I was striking gold if I'm being honest with you. The good news is the infrastructure's there, the club reputation is there and the budget is there as well. If the director of football can move on some of these wanted players and maybe have a busy window, which opens in a week, 
we could end up having a pretty good future. We're going to set our tactic to a 4-2-3-1. We're going to see if he can sign players in that defence where we're desperate for additions. But I'm not going to have any say in them. It is up to the director of football. I have no say in transfer, staffing or contracts. We're going to set all of the responsibilities to the director of football. And we are just going to crack on with the coaching. We begin with a game in, oh, two days time. So we have got two home games coming up in two days time and 10 days time. And they will be our first action of this head coach series. We are going to be back for those tomorrow at 3.30. Will we get a win? Will we get a result? Or are we going to struggle with this hugely imbalanced squad? Let me know what you think of it down in the comments. Where do you think this team needs to improve? And I've got to be honest, while it is a good job for our first one, I don't think I've ever met a more imbalanced squad in my first job as a head coach. Do you agree or disagree? Let me know. And of course, with the premise that we've got to stay up this year and then win automatic promotion next season, do you see any alternative to a sacking in our first job at the FM24 head coach? If you're looking forward to the series and you want to stay up to date, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe and turn that notification bell on to make sure you don't miss a thing. We will be back tomorrow morning at 11.30 to start our other long-term save with Southend United before this one returns at 3.30 tomorrow. I hope you're looking forward to all of that. You can come and join me on Twitch this evening as well. The link is up in the eye above. And if you haven't yet got your hands on the early access for FM24, the link to pre-order is down in the description. But thank you very much for joining me for another year as we begin what should be an eventful journey to the top. How long will it take us to get a chance in England? And will we survive in our first job? We've got a lot of work to do. I'll see you next time to find out if we can start in style.